Greetings. What we're looking at right now is one of my favorite tools. This is a Sieg X2D Mini Mill. I've had this thing for about four years and I absolutely love this thing. When I bought it, I wasn't sure if I really needed it. And now that I have it, I would never go back to a drill press. This thing is just so useful. It does so much. There's things I can do with this that just boggles the mind. It really, it really is a neat tool and it's so versatile. So uh, what I'm gonna be doing today is I'm going to clamp a router bit into this mill and I'm going to turn it into a router table, kind of an upside down router table. And I'm going to router some moldings. There's my moldings. So these need to be notched for a little work in my bathroom. So they'll go over siding. So I'm going to set this up and, and just notch the back side of this molding. And uh, hopefully it turns out okay. Be right back. All right, so first thing I'm gonna do is wipe this table down. So all the grease and WD-40 that I've sprayed on it over the years doesn't make my wood look ugly, which isn't really wood, by the way. It's more like press board. And then all that I do is I create kind of a rip fence All this is just a piece of angle iron. I just want to place this so that it clears the column of the mill. And I can shoot the molding out right past that bench grinder. Now I will clamp my bit. I'm going to make this really tight because I've had router bits loosen up on me over the years and it's not a pretty thing to happen. Next thing I'm going to do is I am going to change the speed of this mill to high speed. Most routers are really creating some serious RPM, so I'm going to set this up to high speed. We'll give that a test. Yep, that's zinging. So my notches need to be about the thickness of the piece of the siding that I'm using. I'm just using beadboard. 
And the bead board is almost two tenths of an inch thick. Oop, let me reset that. Uh, 0.184 inches. That's how deep my router bit needs to cut into the wood. And the notch needs to be three eighths of an inch wide for what I'm doing. So, okay, so it's going to be just like that. of an inch. about the right spot. So now I'm going to feed it just like that underneath the bit. It'll take a little bit at a time. Now, because this is a router and it's going to be zinging, I'm going to put on a pair of gloves because obviously I don't want to be adept at counting and base nine number system, numbering system or perhaps even base eight. I want to keep all my fingers. I'm also going to use hearing protection because routers are loud. Bits spin at a high RPM, so it does get quite noisy. So the first thing I'm going to do is set my depth. And once I nail the depth down, then I'll just work on the width and I'll just subsequently take a little bit more off on each pass. And uh, when I get to the 3 8 mark, I'll shut this thing down and we'll take a look at the result. Pretty close.
pass.
came out very nice. Quite happy with that. So once I paint these moldings and nail them up, they'll look quite nice. Very happy. So it works really good. And you can do this with a router. You would just need some sort of a rip fence or something to index off the edge of the piece so that you get a nice straight line. But, like I said, I've used this for so much over the years, I can always think of new and interesting ways to, to use this tool. And it works very well. So, safety is a, a big concern here. There's no guards on this machine. And you have to have your wits about you when you're doing this. Otherwise, you will nick a finger or something. But in retrospect, it's it's no different than is if as if I had a router bit in this machine or a milling bit in this machine. It would it'd be the same uh, or roughly the same degree of danger. So just be careful if you attempt this. So make sure you don't get your fingers into the bit. But nice tool. I bought this one from Little Machine Shop and uh, also got the belt drive conversion from them also. The belt drive conversion is, in my opinion, a must-have. I, I use this mill for almost two years with the gear drive and it works, but it's not as rugged with the plastic gears. I ended up replacing them once. And then the second time around when they broke, I just went ahead and got the belt drive, which makes this thing really nice because it's a ton quieter and uh, just it's more robust. So that's the way to go with these. But yeah, very nice tool. I highly recommend them. They're very useful. I've had, I had another Chinese made mill years ago, but it was one of the big ones with the round column, around, round column mill. And uh, I didn't use it nearly as much because it just wasn't as user friendly and versatile as this one. I really, really like this machine and uh, I'm glad I bought it. And it seems to be holding up. It's, it's four years old now and I, I really put it through its paces drilling. I use it as a drill press and uh, it doesn't have a lot of power, but it is very precise. And you can clamp milling bits in it, mill aluminum, steel, wood. You can't really do face cutting with it. It's just not rigid enough for that. But for the stuff I do around the garage here, around the shop, it's perfect. So really like it. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. It's just another useful way to use this mill and uh, works, works quite nice.